My talk today is on GraphQL and Gatsby, um, ventures and ecosystem building. Um, so like you're saying, Kyle Matthews, I'm working full time on this and consulting different companies on Gatsby and other project of mine, typography JS. Uh, quick question, who here, raise of hand, has heard of Gatsby before? Okay, decent percentage, that's cool. Uh, yeah, so I wanna tell the story real quick in my uh, a lot of seven minutes about how I decided to use GraphQL for the next version of Gatsby, which I'm working on right now. Should be out in a few months. Um, so yeah, so first quick history of Gatsby. So um, about a year ago or so, um, I was working on a startup and it got to the point where we needed a website. And I was like, how can I only use React and Webpack? Because I've been using it for about a year at that point and then I loved it more than anything else I'd ever used for the web. So did not want to use some crappy other thing. But anyway, so I was like, huh, maybe it'd be possible to build a static site thingy with the React and Webpack. I'm obsessed with the idea and then finally took a week off for product work and it worked. Um, so I was pretty happy with myself. I had a you know, way of taking Markdown and like React components, running them through this Gatsby thing and that would pop a really fast website and that was cool. Um, but there's trouble. Um, I was starting to get, uh, oh yeah, so it's like I was treating data files like Markdown as modules, like Webpack modules. Um, so a Markdown file would become a JS object. Um, but I was getting, uh, there was, anyways, I was getting more and more feature requests for things that this, 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 that Gatsby couldn't do. So like stuff like pagination, uh, category pages, um, people were like, oh, I want to do like custom processing a Markdown. Um, it was hard to do that. Um, you know, what if you just wanted one, you know, slices of data from a big file? Because um, Markdown or, or, or Webpack would just like pull in the whole file. Um, also, what if you wanted to like take data from different sources and like put it on lots of pages? Um, uh, supporting custom file types, pulling in data from external APIs, databases, um, all these things that kind of the web, like treating data as modules uh, paradigm didn't really support. Um, yeah, and because, yeah. Um, yeah, so basically I finally decided, okay, like I have the wrong abstraction here, um, but I wasn't really sure what to do. Um, and, yeah, I'll skip this. Um, and I also started thinking about kind of like static sites versus database driven sites. Where static sites generally work where you have a file and it just kind of like gets pushed through a template and out comes like an HTML file. Um, where a database driven site on the other hand, it's like there's like, hey, here's all your data uh, in your templates or elsewhere, you know, like pull out the data you want into each page. And so you have a lot more flexibility. And so I was thinking like, okay, like pulling, pulling data into pages is a lot more powerful and flexible than like pushing data in, through templates. Um, so I was like, okay, let me like switch paradigms somehow. But the question was like how to do that and I was working through all these different ideas. Um, I was like, I was kind of sad because not as useful as I hope. And then a friend mentioned that he was building a React JS text I generated on GraphQL. Uh, and I was like, oh, GraphQL, <laughs> of course. Um, I've actually been building something with GraphQL and Relay, so I was like, that, I love this idea. Um, and GraphQL would let Gatsby cheat the file system as kind of an APR database, you know, like, like I wanted, you could pull in data. Um, and like all your data sources, whether it was like file system or like external sources would be part of one big GraphQL state tree. Um, yeah, and I really like this quote by uh, Linus, that bad programmers worry about code, or good programmers worry about data structures and the relationships. And wanting to be a good programmer, I was like, I want to focus on data structures. And GraphQL lets me do this. So what's this look like in Gatsby? Um, so this is like a simple sample query. Um, imagine you have like a directory images, and then you kind of like go down, and then you select a file, and then you get back the size and the caption. Extending that, you know, you can add further processing of stuff. You could say like image, give me an image that's a width of 500. And then the image would be created and like a source thing would be returned back to you. Um, here's like, you know, a connection of markdown files. And so you can like pull out the path and the title, like say you're on an index page. Um, so quick demo, very quick demo because I'm running out of time. So I built a, uh, a image gallery um, using this stuff. And it's really simple. Um, you know, it's images, you click through and you see full size one and so forth. 
Um, but what's super cool is that this is all built with just two React components, one for the index page and one for the uh, uh, detail page. Um, and it's like 110 lines of code. Um, yeah, you can read that, I guess. Let me make that a bit bigger. Um, it's only 110 lines of code. Um, and so you can like kind of see through it that it's like it's just a normal React component at the top. Then down here, kind of relay style has the co-located query, um, where on the index page, you know, I'm just selecting each uh, image and then like regular, a regular version, then a retina version. Um, then over here on the detail page, the query actually pulls out a micro version of it. It's just like uh, 20 pixels wide. It's a base 64, um, which is cool technique for optimizing the initial load. We can see here where it loads that you know, base 64 thing and then pops in. Um, anyways, and that was like all the sort of stuff was like super easy to do, super easy to express with GraphQL handling the data processing and declaring in the component exactly what you want. Like actually that, that base 64 stuff, I added the code for base 64 encoding and like changed the component in like a half hour, like Monday night. Um, yeah, so um, really inspired by a lot of like big data, uh, data processing, data pipeline um, tools. We can kind of like string together different kind of data processing primitives and like build something that's like pretty complex but still maintainable and understandable. Um, and so the plan is that like with Gatsby and GraphQL, like dynamically build schemas from base data. So you point, you know, Gatsby at a directory of files and it just comes up with a schema. So you can have like plugins for this that like say like a date, a date plugin would go look for dates and add like arguments for that. An image plugin, you like, what, what, like you saw would add image processing. A uh, markdown plugin, you would look for markdown files and add different ways of rendering and extracting information from that. Um, so all these will just be like NPM packages that you add to a project. Um, yeah, and so it's just like this really easy experience where you hook that up and you instantly have a huge schema to query against and do stuff with. And this would allow for like higher level tools such as like a Gatsby image component that exports a query and then does all the like really nice optimizations that you'd want to do for images but that are hard to do um, if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, but anyways, it'd be all straightforward to do this. And um, yeah, so I think this is perfect for Gatsby. Might be perfect for other people. Uh, if it is, come talk to me. I'd like help, of course, and uh, so forth. It's all open source. And I'm full-time consultant of this thing, so if Gatsby plus this project seem like a good fit for some sort of internal, external project, I'd love for you to hire me. And then, uh, yeah, so, yeah, that's it. <laughs>